Pharmacy families, thank you for joining us for another Dash Diet video. My name is Shannon and most of you know that I'm a diet technician and chef. However, today we have a very special guest on site at Christiana Hospital. This is Mr. Leonard Conyard. Hello. Hello. And I think I said Conyard and I meant to say Conyers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Conyers was a part of the Delaware Food Pharmacy programming and is here to help us with some Cajun seasoned tilapia and a little bit of a lemon glaze right on top. Right. Does that sound good? That sounds excellent. Awesome. So for this video, we're gonna make our tilapia and our lemon glaze. Um, I love a good citrus glaze. I love citrus on fish. Um, and so for the glaze, it's, it's a pretty easy process. I think people sometimes get uh, a little nervous about making like a sauce. Um, but once you know like the thickening agents and the flavors, you're pretty good. First thing we're gonna do is chop up some garlic. So the bottom's what holds everything together, and I always cut it off so that that way, when I turn it on side and smash, it will come right out. Okay. Um, it works better with more fresh garlic than this, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, but either way, it will still work. Because that's what you can usually hear. You can usually hear like a crack. Right. Okay. Um, and we're going to mince these. All this is going to add extra flavor. Uh, lemon is really strong. So I like to complement it with a little bit of garlic and a little bit of honey. Um, we're also going to use some chicken stock, but if you are a pescatarian, please know that you can absolutely use veggie stock, uh, low sodium or salt free, of course. Okay, so for this sauce, we're going to saute the garlic first. And we're going to add in probably like about one tablespoon, maybe two, depending on how much you're making. I think I'm just going to use one for right now. And you can already see where it's starting to bubble. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're going to add our garlic right into it. And remember, garlic cooks super duper fast. So we have to be careful to not burn it. And kind of mix it around a little bit. Would you mind handing me a spoon or a cat thing? That's fine. Cat. Okay. You like cats? No. That's all right. You like dogs? My favorite, my favorite dogs. Okay, that's fair. There. All right, so we want to get the aromas out. We want to release the smell of the garlic. All of this is just to enhance the Cajun seasoning. It's going to be good. Okay. Once these are list, like lightly browned, and they're not quite lightly browned yet, we're going to add in the low sodium chicken stock. Um, Mr. Connors, would you mind pouring in? You can see a little bit of brown there. The and step back. This is going to jump. It's going to jump. Anything you're putting into oil is going to jump. Okay. Do the whole thing. Whole thing. It's gonna be the base. We're gonna make it look like it jumped. Yeah, it didn't jump. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. All right, so we're gonna let this come to a simmer. All right? Mm -hmm. And then we will add in our lemon juice and our honey. Okay, so it looks like it's starting to simmer a little bit, and we did not burn the garlic, which is crucial because burnt garlic does not taste good. No, it doesn't. It's very good to answer that question correctly. We're gonna add in the lemon juice. Um, I'm gonna put mustard conyers on the juicer. Um, and I have two lemons. I cut off the top and the bottom and cut them in half. And he's gonna put them right over. Straight to the broth. Straight to the broth, okay. Um, lemons have seeds in them, limes don't. So just be aware of that, that if you are in the house that does not have a juicer, you can use your hands. Uh, you will find cuts if they are there, right? Have you done that yet? What's that? Gotten kind of stung with lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Yep. Okay. Especially when you could use good knives. <laughs> they give you so many paper cuts, you don't even know you've been cut until you use the lemon. Yes. I'm going to add in a little bit of honey now to this honey bear. Okay. Um, I know he looks a little sad. I don't think he has eyes. Does he have eyes? <laughs> There's no eyes. Out. Now this is for the tilapia, right? Yep, this is going to be a glaze that's going to go on top. We're going to add a little bit of, I believe, black pepper to this, or we can use white pepper. We want to keep the color consistent. Let's use a little bit of white pepper so that it doesn't uh, change the consistency of it. Okay? Um, and, and probably like just a cup, like a, a dash, I would dash. say, or a pinch. A dash is about an eighth of a teaspoon of liquid, and a pinch is an eighth of a teaspoon of powder. So well, just a little good. bit. It's good to know, right? That's good. Okay. Um, and we're using the dash diet. Yes, we are using the dash diet. Very good. 
Um, and to make this into like the sauce consistency, we're gonna make a slurry, cornstarch slurry, okay? To make the cornstarch slurry, we're gonna need cornstarch and just water. So typically it's a two to one ratio, a tablespoon of cornstarch to two tablespoons of water. Um, and we're gonna mix them together. And once this comes to a boil, we'll add it in and it should thicken right up. All right, so we already have two tablespoons of water in, and we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of cornstarch, just like that. And then we're gonna whisk it together. Do you wanna whisk it? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Whisk it, baby. Whisk it right. Whisk it, baby. Whisk it all night. Whisk it all night. Well, as long as you don't know, use the asparagus to do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that looks good. All right. So the reason we're making sure that it is thoroughly whisked is so that we don't get uh, clumps. Cool. Okay. Um, we're gonna take that same whisk. If you don't mind, whisk the sauce as well. You wanna sing a song? Sing a song about the sauce. No, the whisk. No. Oh, All sing right. Whisk it, baby. <laughs> All right. Looks good. Now, we'll use the same thing again. We're going to take this and hopefully it'll be enough. But you see how it's already like boiling? Say it's boiling. That's what we want. Okay, and we're going to mix this right in. It will not change the color. It will dissolve, but it will get like a glaze pretty quickly. You see how it's thickening? Uh -huh. Now, remember with this stuff, you can always add more. If you want more black pepper, you want more garlic more lemon, you can adjust things. So you just have to taste it as you go. You can see here, the big test, I think, for um, a glaze, which just looks amazing, is the back of a spoon. So you can take the spoon and it should coat it, just like that. And since it's coated, it's already good to go. All right, so we'll take this off the heat and we'll wait till we finish our tilapia to put it together. So. Now that we have our glaze made, we're gonna focus on our tilapia, okay? Mr. Connors, what's your favorite kind of fish? Flounder. Really? If I have to say so. Okay, flounder. all right, all right. I would say flounder. I do like a tuna, I like a salmon, but I also like tilapia. Tilapia is the fourth most eaten fish in our country, and it's actually like an umbrella term. So in other words, there's over 500 fish that live under that, and they're all different. The kind that we use most in this country is like, kind of has a little red or a little bit of blue to it. It's a nice mild flavor. We're going to make it taste better because it is mild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're going to add some seasonings, a little bit of Cajun seasonings. Okay. Uh, first thing you're going to need is two tablespoons, two teaspoons of smoked paprika. You can use regular paprika. I am a sucker for smoked paprika. It smells okay. better. It does. It's nice. So two teaspoons. Since that's half, you're going to need to do that four times. You can just dump it because we're going to we're going to mix them all up. You do not have to make that look pretty. I mean, you already do just by standing next to it, but you can, uh, yeah, you're good with that. Then we're going to need a fourth of a teaspoon of the, the cayenne. Um, so do about half of that. Okay. You can add more or less heat if you want. I'm not a spice, spicy, spicy love person. It's not my thing. Well, it's already summertime. You don't need much heat. Yeah. And then we're going to add a half of a teaspoon of the brown sugar. The brown sugar is what's going to caramelize it, give it that blackened kind of look. Okay. And then we're going to need a teaspoon of the low sodium adobo, which I know you all get from Michelle Torres. <laughs> okay. Just one of our favorites. Just a half? A whole teaspoon. So you'll, you'll do that. You'll do that twice. Yeah. We want to make sure that we make enough, even though here we're going to make one, we make sure there's enough for two. Um, in case people want to like have someone over or cook for friends or family, something like that. Um, then we're going to add some ground onion to it. It's another teaspoon. So we'll need two of those because that's a half teaspoon measure. I can't find my stuff. I bet you everything's organized in your house, isn't it? Nope. It's not? Okay. I just know where it is. All right. And then we're going to add some cracked black pepper, which is right there. You go ahead because I have my... my gloves on for the fish. We are really reaching on that pepper. That's How much are we going to do? As much as you can get out of that pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that looks good. Yeah, the chili's in there, so we don't need much pepper. Alright, and just, you can mix it up with anything. Just use a fork. It's fine. We just want to make sure that it's blended. It's kind of fun. It's like playing with one of those stress sort of things. Uh -huh. You know, one of those sand pit things. Now, did you eat fish a lot growing up? Was this something that you guys had? 
Pretty much every Friday. Every Friday. Pretty much. And what would you what would you guys have on your fish? What seasoning? Yeah. Well, mom was a salt and pepper baby. Like okay. she made everything taste like it was scrumptious with just salt and pepper. But because I grew up in an area where seasoning was very big, I started liking like um, I use Adobe all the time. Okay. I can't help but use it um, because you cheat. Everything's in it. Yeah. Everything is in it. Um, it's like all purpose. All purpose. We're gonna add some olive oil to our fish to coat it. Okay. If you don't add the olive oil, it won't stick as well, and it also gives it another layer of flavor. All right, so we're gonna just we can pour it right over top. It does not That's matter. Say. Do, do, do. Okay, and we'll kind of I have my gloves on because mm -hmm. I'm going to be touching the fish, and if I don't wear the gloves, then cats in the neighborhood follow me home. <laughs> it's not nice. It's not what we want. If Fragrance. I touch the fish, David and Dot might attack uh, me when I walk in. The, the fish door. grins. Well, and when you cook fish in your house. That can, that, that can linger, right? Yep. So what you can do, and again, this might be more work than it's worth, but you can actually leave out a bowl of like water and white vinegar overnight, and it helps like get rid of the smell. But now your house smells like vinegar. So then they say That's you can do, smell. what's that? That's a good smell. It can be, but you can boil then some lemons and some cinnamon, which is an even better smell in my world. Mm -hmm. um, and that way, but that's a lot of work. You know, sometimes I just turn on the exhaust and hope for the best. <laughs> all right. So now that this is coated, all right, um, we're going to press it in here. I'm going to kind of push all this I was together. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it like a whole royal fish. But you can't take me anywhere. I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> I worked in kids and listen to music all the time. Do you like to listen to music when you cook? Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. All right. We'll push it in here. I won't sing that song. No, you will not. <laughs> you will not. PJ, PJ. All right, all right. All right, so that already looks pretty. Okay, and we'll put it in here till we heat up our pan to get this guy going. We're going to cook our fish, our tilapia, with the seasoning. We'll put about a tablespoon. We just want enough to coat the bottom. Okay, and we want it to get... Um, brown quickly. Tilapia does not take a long time to cook because it's really a thin fish. Um, I always use non-stick because um, I, I, like Bobby Flay says, don't be a hero. There's no need to. And with fish, you're always going to go presentation side down. All right. So the side that you want to show to people, you're going to put that down first. So we'll put it in here, let it cook a bit. <clears throat> and I'll ask Mr. Conyers a couple more questions. Um, oh, Mr. Connor, what did the fish say when it ran into a wall? I don't know what the fish said. It said, damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so you can see already this is getting smoky, getting crispy. We're going to want to make sure that it's all getting the same amount. These burners are a little uneven, which is normal. This happens in my own house. So don't be afraid to touch your pan. Flip it around, make sure that all of that one side is getting that crispiness that we're looking for. Right. We're going to use a non-stick spatula. Again, plastic so we don't screw up our pots and pans. Right. Going to come under it. Come on, Mr. Fish. And we'll flip it. Oh, that's pretty. It's nice, like looking in the mirror. Gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Right? Put nice and black in. All right, we're going to give it a couple minutes, and on this one, because it is an electric range, we're shutting the heat right off. We're just going to let this coast and hang out for a little bit because it's super smoky. All right, so now it's for my favorite part because I think that you you eat with all your senses. It has to smell good. It should look nice. It should obviously taste good. All these things make an impact. So when I plate things, um, these are our sweet potatoes. I like to go for height. Um, I think it's just more aesthetically pleasing um but whatever you decide to do you can do no that gives you that 3d effect yep and that's it what we're looking out. for it makes it stand in case out. you want to impress somebody or just for yourself because you deserve to like what you eat okay and we're going to put i squeezed a little bit of lemon right on these asparagi we're going to kind of give them a little slanty right there give them a little curve okay one more because i know how much you love them 
Look like a wheat stalk in a thunderstorm. It looks beautiful. All right, and then we'll take our fishy. Now that looks beautiful. All right, um, and again, presentation side, right, right on up. Right. We want to be able to see everything. We want uh -huh. to see that there's fish, there's uh, sweet potatoes, and there is asparagus. And then we're going to add a little bit of our glaze yes. right on top. You can see how that got like, yes. a great consistency. Um, and we'll kind of pour it right down there. And just to give it a little pop of color, we did a little lemon twist. In case you need to put that on top there, a little something extra. And there's your meal. Yeah, it's your meal. Thanks, everyone, for coming and joining us here today. I hope it was helpful. In our next video, we'll be creating another Dash Diet recipe. Trust me, it's good. Remember, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to our care team at Christiana.